still think that Dak, uh, his wagon is hitched firmly to the ass of Ezekiel Elliott. And at any given moment, Ezekiel Elliott can put up 96 yards, possibly on one play. And Dallas can be up in this game about 19 to nothing. And all of a sudden, Alfred Morris will start getting goal line carries. Uh, weird things happen when you play bad teams and you're a team that's, that's got a nice record. Weird things tend to happen. Blowouts in the NFL just aren't what you want it to be. I think Dallas beats their ass in that game. But I'm not going to go oh, buck wild for, for Dak. I'm going to call my, my must-play quarterback, and I, I'm going to laugh at myself when I say this, but I think Phillip Rivers have a, has a monster day against Tennessee. I, I think it could be a shootout. I mean, I wouldn't see why not. He's been producing. So, again, sure. if you, they might not win. It, it all they depends might. on how they oh. do it. If, if they can get their running game going, Tennessee, you're going to see – you're not going to see what you saw in Jacksonville, but – No, you won't. Be good at times. Their defense can be hot and cold, so we'll see. Yeah, that know. that Thursday night Jacksonville Tennessee game. Jacksonville should be embarrassed. They didn't even show up. Oh, uh, that was that was one of the actually that was one of the worst performances awful. by a football team I've seen in recent memory. Awful that they, could be like they weren't even trying. Brent Bortles looked like, I mean, he looked like Jay Cutler. Yeah, he will, He just looked like he had no confidence in himself. Didn't want to be there. I, I I actually at some point in that game, if I'm Gus Bradley, I I pull I pull Blake Bortles and I just send Chad Henney out and tell tell Bortles like you you're just making it all worse on yourself. Go sit down. Let's yeah, regroup. That's... You're a young guy. We're invested in your future. Go sit down because this is just going to be nothing but a further embarrassment for you. And why just like why let it burn? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, oh, half yeah. The couch is on fire, and the other half the other half is still salvageable. Don't let the whole thing burn. Just. And that's a terrible analogy. But I told you guys I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, it's, a good, it's what a coach does to try to light a fire under a starter and let him know that he's not above. You know, you yeah. don't get placed in and what, are you not trying to win? I mean, there was his lack of body, his body language, you know, his lack gross. of – I mean, it was his, his release. It was everything about the guy that day. And, you know, Blake Bortles was pretty damn good last year. Yeah, he, he was might great. Be one of the he might be one of the busts of fantasy this year. So I think he is. Um, he did have a bunch of garbage numbers in the fourth quarter last week, but he had a bunch of garbage numbers last year, too, now when you go look at it. He had garbage time numbers. Guys like Allen Robinson all of a sudden forgot how to catch. He was touted as a superstar coming into the season. Fortunately for me, I only drafted him in two leagues, <laughs> and I'm, I'm paying for it, but... Uh, anyhow, we could go on all night. We got to jump into running backs because we do have a new format. We got to keep it tight. So yeah, we uh, can make it. We can make it real easy on running backs. So you mentioned yeah, there's a lot of good choices out there. I think there's a couple that jump out at me. Let me hear your side of the story. Uh, I'm still not afraid. I don't care. Uh, Zeke, Zeke, all the way, baby. That's hard to argue with, especially if you're not spending big money somewhere else. You can squeeze him in at 9,200 on, on DraftKings. No, and, and, we're going. We're going it's cheap just, in the next running back slot. There's no reason to go high. And I yeah, think, I, I'll, I think I know who you're talking about, too. Uh, all right, I'm going to plug Zeke into this lineup here, but I'm going to plug him in with my guy, Phillip Rivers, and I forget I ever called him my guy. I will never yeah, do that. Yeah, no, no, let's do it. That's fine. Okay. Keep in mind, I said Aaron Rodgers, folks. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you got Rodgers. Uh, I got Rivers and an extra 900 bucks. So. Okay. Fire now, away. Who's that second running back? I bet you we're going to agree on this one. It's Shark Chandrick West all the way. We're pretty close. We're pretty um, close. 5,600 or, like I said, I'm going to spit out a few, and you tell me I also like Tim Hightower, 6,100. Yep. Um, what? The, is that who you were talking about? Yeah, Hightower is one of them, and I have one more out there. You okay. Name two of my three. Um, uh, possibly if he starts, because he's their only offense, Carlos Hyde, but I don't expect him to. Right. Um, I just want to throw that out there. Then Terrence West. Um, the only problem I had with him in his last game, they only gave him eight rushing attempts, and it wasn't. Yeah, did they play from that. behind in that game? Yeah, they were. They. I didn't think it was a blowout, though. It just seemed like they. It was. Him. You're right. Uh, that total Bandit. was under 40 points, I believe, against the Jets. Uh, the Jets' front four did a nice job of plugging him up. But you're right, he had eight carries, 10 yards, and, and, and a non-existent fantasy day. But, but I think, like I said, Steelers are 26th against the pass. Or, uh, excuse me, uh, 16th against the, the run. Rush. But, 
they but got like, smoked by Jay Ajay for 200 yeah, some odd yards. Exactly. And, and overall, um, I, I'm not too impressed with what they do or against No, me. Pittsburgh's defense is, is generally unimpressive. What do you think about Derrick Henry? Uh, you know, I, I had him in a lot of lineups. But then I just read that DeMarco Murray practiced fully today without any. Yeah, yeah so then, then I had to take him because I was hoping Murray was going to sit out because that's one I really – because I like DeMarco Murray this week. I just yeah. figured since he's hurt, I'm going to expect a little less from him. And then so that kind of took him off the, the, the talk. But I would have sure. a lineup with him in it. He's just not my favorite this week. And then, like I said, I was hoping he wasn't going to start because if he wasn't, that it was going to be Travis Henry was probably the best pick out of the three I just mentioned prior. Uh, Derrick Henry. Yeah, did I say okay. Travis Henry? You said uh, old uh, Tennessee volunteer and Buffalo Bill, uh, Travis Henry, and I started Travis flashing Henry back a little bit to 1999. <laughs> yeah, the kid making trouble with the law. Travis yeah, Henry, my yeah, my yeah, yeah, smuggling drugs. He yeah, did a bunch Travis. of shit. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, I, I would I would really like him, but I just don't think he's going to get the the carries, you know. Gotcha. Well, I think uh, fitting Char- Chark Andrick West in there, he is the number one running back there from Kansas City this week. As uh, Spencer Ware is in concussion protocol, and Jamal Charles, man, if you drafted him in your standard fantasy football league, you you deserve it. He, you can't take these guys coming back from injury. You just can't. Not as early as you did. If you took him in the seventh round, big deal. But let somebody else take him in the second and third. And that was something I stressed in the preseason is don't touch him. Uh, because he's gone. And Spencer Ware filled in. Ware's out. Charkandrick West has done the job before. So I, I like that pick actually quite a bit. He's got some value. He's cheap. Uh, last week, 14 carries, 52 yards. Three targets out of the backfield. Two catches and eight rushing yards. Not a big day, but he didn't play very much either. No, I, like I said, they but their offense revolves around the run. And, it does, uh, and last week they threw the ball, uh, which I'm going to throw one more running back into the mix. Uh, and I think that Le'Veon Bell, as high-priced as he is, will deserve some consideration as a chalk play this week. I don't know that I love him as a play, but I think that even if you do have a, a bewildered, uh, beleaguered, and one-legged Ben Roethlisberger, uh, Le'Veon Bell still comes into play against the Baltimore defense that I'm just not sold on at all. I, I can't pick on him. I don't know how I feel about Melvin Gordon this week. He's he's proven to be a touchdown hound, though. Yeah, he is, but like I said, at the same time, uh, there's better matchups in the cost. He's kind of pricey this week. So, yeah. like I said, if someone – you know, we're at the point now to where – all these guys, if you have them on your your standard league, they're all must starts. The guys we're talking about, but no, they certainly are. They certainly we, are. We can't do that now. So, um, so we're anybody to running back wise that you just do not want to start this week? Somebody you're going to leave alone altogether? Um, I I don't know if I want to touch Todd Gurley. I mean, what a bust overall this year. Um, yeah, I. I there's there's just no reason to start him until otherwise. Yeah, I wouldn't touch Mark Ingram. Um, How about Jay Ajayi? You know, I thought about starting him in one because any time a guy goes for over two in two games in a row, yeah, then he's going to get worn out this week. Try try it one more time. Sure. You know, no, no, they're going to feed him the ball. They're yeah, and they need to. They need to because they're record. whole. The whole dynamic of their offense changed, and they actually were productive. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I think this week they are going up against a, a, a decent, uh, if not very good, New York Jets front seven. Uh, they can be pretty good. And Ryan, Ryan Tannehill doesn't scare anybody. The only thing that scares me about JHI this week is my Miami's good at home. They've proved to be a pretty good football team at home. Uh, or at least com- very competitive, which is surprising considering who we're talking about here. So I'm going to fade J.J. I don't want to start him anywhere this week, but I do agree with you that he's going to see the carries. Uh, the Jets should be prepared for that, but that doesn't mean they're going to stop him in Miami. So I'm going to I'm going to leave him alone. He's the guy off my list this week. Is is on the list is somebody I wouldn't play, but yeah, the high tower play, Charkandrick West. I'm for it, but in my lineup, I am plugging in Ezekiel Elliott and Charkandrick West as my two running backs. Sounds good. All right, let's hop onto wide receivers. And uh, there's good choices here, so let's make these fly by, and then we'll keep rolling it out. 
All right, well, I'll give you two because we're going to have to talk about the third. Okay. Um, well, no, I'll give you three really quick, and then we'll talk about the last two. I okay. like uh, Dante Moncrief. Moncrief. Uh, He's finally one. back to Moncrief, folks. Yep. Uh, T.Y. Hilton is questionable with that. And even if he plays, I don't expect him to be as dynamic as he usually is because it's a hammy. So yeah. Moncrief is going to go off this week. Um, I also like Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry, I think, given the nature of who they're going against. and The Jets' secondary he, sucks. Yeah, he, he's only scored one touchdown this week, and it was in week three. So, I mean, the guy is certainly due for a score. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that's a possibility. Um, I like Devontae Adams for sure. Uh, I've already plugged in Devontae Adams. Yep, especially if... Uh, if Cobb in Green Bay against a defense that sucks. Yes, and if Cobb isn't playing, then, you know, I actually have a lineup, and I'll just say it really quickly. Aaron sure. Rodgers, Ezekiel Elliott, Tim Hightower, Jordy Nelson, Devontae Adams, and Dante Montreal. Okay, so you're going to stack Rodgers with, with Adams and Nelson. Yeah, they both went off. Nelson is a scoring machine, even though he's not the yardage guy that he used to be. So I, I really like that... Um, you know, he's only gone two games where he hasn't scored a touchdown. I think he could certainly get into 100-plus yards and a touchdown this week. Which is Let me bring up a point about that, too. Uh, in years past and in discussions past, you see a lot of folks who don't really want to stack their quarterback with two wide receivers. But i got to tell you, if it's a team that has scoring opportunities, I'm all for it. In any league last week where I had Derek Carr, Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper, or in some leagues, because I'm a Raider homer, I did have Seth Roberts and Amari Cooper. Uh, you took a nice chunk home. I was I, I I took a bit back last week. It was it was a nice run, but it was because I had the right stack, and the right yeah. stack sometimes that really helps you narrow it down. So the idea of Devontae Adams and Jordy Nelson um, uh, gives me uh, gives me a little bit of a fantasy boner. Yeah, let me tell you, I have seen on multiple occasions where the winner of the big, you know, the $300,000 pot, sure. where there's a few hundred thousand people playing, so that's a pretty, you, you got to score a home run when you do. The winner on multiple occasions has had the double wide receiver quarterback stack. And yeah. a lot of times, it used to be, uh, a couple of years ago, it was when Peyton was good. I saw right. people do it with Emmanuel Sanders and Demarius. Right. And then I've also seen, like I said, I've seen people, the guy last week who won did it with Derek Carr yep. or, and uh, Amari Cooper and um, Crab. Cooper, Crabtree. Yeah, and so, don't forget it's happened twice this season where you've had Drew Brees, Brandon Cooks, and Kobe Fleener. Exactly. That's been exactly. two big winners twice this season is that stack, which would – you know, might make you start to wonder about Dak Prescott, Cole Beasley, and stack the running back in the mix in Ezekiel Elliott. Possibly. Like I said, I mean, that's where just, the other guy I like, um, by the way, obviously I like uh, Antonio Brown um, because I think he's going to be really the only guy catching Ben's passes that's reliable. He, I mean, for me, he, he is contingent upon Roethlisberger altogether. Exactly. But so he's expensive. So let's just pretend we're not getting tossed on him. Uh, right. Dead Bryant is 7,800, and uh, I honestly wouldn't have a problem starting him and Zeke because I think that's going to be all the offense. If you saw last week, the guy got targeted 14 times. Yeah, they were forcing the ball. Four passes and still got 113 yards and a touchdown. Yeah. That's the juiciest numbers. I mean, because obviously I expect them to catch more than four passes this time. He's going right. to get 14 targets. So what is he going to have? Is he now going to have 60 yards? I don't think so. I think that against this defense that he's he might be our guy if we're going primo. Like I said, you you make the call, but that's why I wanted to say because he, he's – him no, and James so Humphrey. I got Dez all over the place on here because, I, I like I said, I was leaning towards the Dak thing and it kind of scared me. But Dez is in that mix just because of the 14 targets. Uh, division rival Philadelphia last week. Yeah, they're going to go at him on primetime television. He's had a slow start to the year. He's been banged up. But against Cleveland, this is, this looks like something that this is where Dez gets in the end zone. 
Well, remember that is that was his first game in a month. Yeah. So if that's his first game back, I mean, do you expect him to drop off? 